What's up, family? Welcome back. It's your girl, D-Ray, the Divine Relationship Alchemist, helping you heal your relationship with self to heal your relationship with others. I am back with another one, a major one, right? And it is how the shadow self manifests in your waking life. How the shadow self manifests in your waking life, okay? So before I get into it, I want to say uh, thank you to all the new family um, who have decided to stick around on my page. I appreciate y'all. Um, I want to say thank you for joining uh, the Love Live Life family. I appreciate that as well. Uh, thank you to all the content creators, uh, Moog, Travis Mages, my love, DreamWise, I love live life. Thank y'all so much. Thank all of you in all the roles that you play in helping raise my consciousness and then the consciousness of the collective, all right? Um, I appreciate that, right? So back to the topic, right? How the, excuse me, how the shadow self manifests in your waking life. Y'all, I've been doing so many live videos, it's like I done forgot how to record. Anyways, let's keep going. So, uh, the movie Us came out. Made a video on the shadow self. If you or uh, basically, I made a video describing what Us was actually talking about, which is the shadow. If you have not seen that, go and watch that. Uh, after Us came out and Nipsey Hut, okay, I don't know what's going on. Whatever, let's keep going. And Nipsey Hussle made the transition. I made another video talking about the shadow self. And now I'm back again talking about the shadow self. Wow, okay? Obviously, this is of high importance for our consciousness. It's of high importance for my consciousness. I know I am constantly ascending meaning raising in my consciousness, raising in uh, the dimensions on planes and raising my ability to perceive uh, external forces and energies as well as my own internal forces and energies. Like we have to deal with our emotions if we want to continue going higher, excuse me, if we want to continue going higher in the dimensions, all right? third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, seventh dimension, so on and so forth. And you get to these higher dimensions by understanding your vibrations. How does this relate to the shadow self? Your shadow self is created uh, by your experiences, the experiences that cause you to have highly charged emotions, mostly the ones that are low vibration. So that's going to be your traumatic experiences, the things that have happened in your life that have totally rocked your world on some way or another. Now, this can be ranged from something grand to something small. Regardless is if you feel strongly about it and you feel lower vibrational emotions, fearful emotions, your shadow self is created. Your shadow side is directly connected to your ego. Okay, the ego is what we allow to be in the light. It's how we want to be perceived, how we want to be seen, that aspect. And then the shadow is, of course, by way of the name, shadow, it's our dark side. It's the side that we would probably, that we would rather keep to ourselves, all right? And so we got to get into this because what I have realized over the past couple of weeks is that the shadow self manifests daily, Right? The emotions that come up, whether they be actual fear, anxiety, uh, disappointment, sadness, jealousy, lack of self-worth, lack of self-value, uh, anger, annoyance, irritation, all of these are emotions that stem from the shadow self, right? Now, I got my phone here because I don't want to forget nothing and I done already been going up. I done made so many mistakes on this video. My mind just kind of went boop. Whatever, who cares? Keep going because it's not about that. It's about the content. It's about the message, right? So again, your shadow is all of your fears, disappointments, hidden desires, fetishes, your unhealed, low vibration emotions, okay? So how does it appear in your waking life? Because 
we can see the shadow in our dream world. That's when we see demonic entities, when we see dark energy, or when we even have a nightmare. Most of the time, those are manifestations of our shadow. In our waking life, our shadow self is triggered by experiences, by people, by things that we hear, by things that we see. What do I mean? Um, all I can do is give y'all examples of my own experiences. And I love that. I love um, challenging myself to be vulnerable so that I can get the point across. Because when I share something, now I've created this exchange with my higher self that says, we're actually ready to let it go. We're actually moving on. We're actually ascending, right? So for me, y'all know my love dream wise. He is amazing. Like he really, really is. Like the videos are like only that much of who he really is. And um, in this life, we are constantly growing, learning, transforming and one thing that i know is that relationships are mirrors as to what in you needs to be changed now shout out to travis majors because on one of his videos the video he just made on easter he talks about spiritual people we're always challenging ourselves we're always challenging our psyche and we're always trying to change and be better understanding why we think and act the way that we do anyways so since relationships are mirrors the conversations my love and I have are always reflecting to either one of us or both of us of something we need to improve upon, improve upon within our thinking, within our behaving, within our feeling, right? So I don't remember what happened per se, but my, my love tells me I need to do better with something. He gives me constructive criticism, right? Now when he gives me this con constructive criticism, I start to feel some type of way about it. I get a little bit emotional, a little bit sensitive, and I'm not even really understanding why. I'm like, why is this bothering me, you telling me something about myself that I need to be made better, right? And what it was was a manifestation of my shadow, okay? So that, that, that feeling of um, you're correcting me right now, so I must not be my best self. I must not be worthy. I must not be valuable was a manifestation of my shadow. Okay? So again, whenever you are feeling lower vibrational emotions based off of what is said to you, based off of what you hear, based off of what you see, based off an experience that you are in, you have to investigate why that is. And so... After we had the, con the conversation, I was feeling some type of way about it. I continue to ask myself, why? Why do I feel, where is this coming from? And what I came to realize is that I grew up in a uh, single parent household, right? My mom was a single mom and she did a great job. She did the best that she could do. Now, I still know my dad and have a, have a relationship with my dad. And I love my dad and I know that my dad loves me. How I created this shadow of not being able to be constructively criticized by a man that I love was because my father wasn't in the house like that. So uh, whenever we were spending time together, it was all ice cream and bubbles. It's, I can't do no wrong, okay? I can't do no wrong, right? My daddy's not trying to correct me. We we seeing each other every other weekend. He's not trying to correct me. He's just trying to have fun, right? And so because I never had that as a kid growing up, in this situation, I felt like when I was being corrected, like a piece of me was dying or like I wasn't as valuable, I wasn't as special or I just wasn't the great person that I know I am, right? Because you're having to correct me. I must not be all that, all right? But in our reality, that's not true. That's a manifestation of my shadow. And this is how you know your shadow is directly connected to your ego because your ego is what feels some type of way about being constructively criticized, right? Your ego is like, no, if you're telling me something about myself, then that means a part of me has to die, and if it's coming from a place of love, then okay, that part of me has to die. I got to let it go because I want to grow. And then if it's not coming from a place of love, like say somebody at work telling you something about yourself, then the ego is like, oh, hell no, you don't know who you're talking to. 
You understand what I'm saying? But my shadow manifested because I was actually kind of hurt and heartbroken by him simply correcting me. And he, he, we were, it was a regular conversation. It was, uh, he, we, he spoke in, uh, a, an even tone. It wasn't like his voice was raised or anything like that. But I felt like I was not valuable. I felt like because I was being criticized that I wasn't valuable and that I wasn't worthy. Now, is that true? Absolutely not, right? But me having the understanding of the shadow self, in that moment, now I can decide. Am I going to completely surrender to this? Meaning, am I going to surrender to the shadow and really feel bad just because my ego is feeling a little bruised? Or am I going to uh, communicate with my shadow self and say, look, this is the situation. We don't have to feel that way about it. We are not six years old anymore. Like, you are fine. Being given some knowledge, some wisdom about how to better yourself does not take anything away from you. So it's like when the shadow self presents itself, right, either you're going to give in to the shadow self or you're going to boss up. And you're going to create a whole new energy about yourself. And you're going to heal another layer of yourself. Okay? The shadow self manifests in situations, conversations, excuse me, experiences that make you feel any type of way that is not of high vibration. Okay? Now, you definitely need to be uh, attuned and in alignment with yourself so that you can kind of understand what it is that you're actually feeling. Because a lot of times we confuse the energy of other people and we take it on as ours. And sometimes the anger, the frustration, the, uh, the disappointment, the sadness that you may be feeling may be coming from people in your direct vicinity, right? But if you are engaging with someone that you love, somebody that you care about, and if or 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 if you are alone and you're having an experience and something is coming up, it's probably a manifestation of your shadow. Right? And when the, how do we actually deal with this, right? How do we actually deal with this? Well, one, when that thing comes up, pause. Stop. The the last thing that you want to do is react from that state of being. The last thing that you want to do is react from that low vibrational state of being. The first thing that you want to do is pause. All right? And this is something that we got to learn. We got to pause. Okay, I'm feeling some type of way. Let me take a deep breath. And ask yourself, where is this coming from? Your, if you've been sharpening your intuition, if you've been sharpening your spiritual skills and you know what your spirit and higher self and angels and guidance sounds like, you will get the direct answers that you need. You will get the answers that you need to know how you are to respond going forward. All right. So you got to pause. You got to take a breath and ask yourself, self, where is this coming from? Okay, because the shadow is not something that is so very apparent. That's why it's a shadow. That's why it's just in the background, okay? It's not just out there, you know, just like, I'm here. But when it comes up, it is up to you to consciously decide that I'm going to do something differently so that you can continue raising your vibration and continue raising your level of spiritual consciousness and your level of spiritual knowing. This is what you have to do because if you let these situations, if you let your shadow self run rampant and control everything and control your life, one, you're not as spiritual as you think you are, okay? Two, you're going to manifest even more traumatic experiences. Who wants to do that? Like, no, nobody consciously wants bad experiences upon themselves. But when we don't analyze and investigate the parts that we play in it, then we're not doing what we need to do to be proactive to ensure that these things don't happen again. Like, now I know my honey can tell me something, babe, I need you to do this. And because I know my self-value, because I know my self-worth, because I just dealt with that, I'm like, 
Okay. If it sounds like something that I want to take, he too, I will. And if it sounds like nothing, I'm going to have to politely disagree. I love you, babe. I love you. Thank you. Because I know you're pure of heart. But I don't feel like that is right. I don't feel like that's for me. Right? And then I can move on. But if I never address it and if I never see it, if I'm never able to become conscious of my shadow self, then anytime he says something to me, it's going to be a bigger issue. All right? And so I say again, if we don't learn how to deal with our shadow self, we will manifest these situations over and over and over again, just a different face. Okay? So let me make sure I didn't miss anything. All right. Again, y'all, your shadow self simply serves to protect you. So in my situation, my shadow came up because it's like, uh, no, you are not about to make her feel like she is not valuable. You are not about to make her feel like she is not worthy. You need to stop right there. Right. That's what my shadow self did. But your shadow can be so protective that it, that it inhibits your growth. I just had to stop and pause right there because that's the main issue. Hell, I'm trying to grow, right? I want to be made better. So if I want to keep on taking things personal, right? And I'm just using myself as an example. You put yourself in your own situation so that you can understand, right? If I want to continue growing, if I want to continue getting better, I'm going to have to tell my shadow self, chill. We're not going to get so emotional over this because if I'm all wrapped up in my emotions, I cannot hear the real message behind what's going on here. I cannot get the information that I need in order for me to grow. So your shadow can inhibit you from going to where you need to go. That's why you got to address the shadow. That's why you have to recognize and realize when it comes up. It could be something so simple. It could be somebody at the store, you know, I don't know, said something to you or cut you off in a parking lot. You mad as hell. You want to fight. You know, what you like, what, like you, you really taking it personal that this person like, you know, cut you off. They did that cause of you, right? They just don't like you. So they just cut you off and now you're taking it personal. So when you're able to stop and think like that, like I had to stop and think my love is not telling me this about myself because he wants to hurt my feelings because he intentionally wants to devalue me. Like that's insane. Right. And so a shadow self that goes unaddressed is insanity. It really is. Like, I don't understand people who still have road rage. Like, I just understand it's not about me. Like, if you're mad in the car, you're just mad by yourself. Okay? That's your shadow self. All right? So, it manifests by way of low vibration emotions. When these low vibrational emotions come up, and that's not to say you won't experience sadness and things like that, like a crazy experience happening with a family member and things like that. That's totally normal. But when it's a, a growth moment, when it's a test from spirit, you need to step up. You need to step up. You need to let your shadow self down. You got to pause, ask yourself why, and understand where this reaction stems from how did you learn to react and feel the way that you do in these different situations this is how we grow this is how we evolve all right subscribe to my youtube page if you have not already stay on the lookout for the launch of my website so that you guys can start booking uh your consultations and coaching sessions and all of that other lovely stuff you're going to get from me your girl d-ray helping you heal your relationship with self to heal your relationship with others peace